Hello, and welcome to another episode of Spiritual Cuisine. I'm your host, Dr. Asada Haki, and I come with the peace that I am. Today, I want to take the time to share my thoughts on holding the space. Holding the space is your mental state, how to um, hold your space and high vibrations, how to keep it positive. And so I wanted to just share my experience through my experiences, the things that I've learned and the things that I had to constantly and still do kind of like check, excuse me, I don't know what's going on. Like all of a sudden just stuff is just flying. Like, so excuse me. So there's nothing wrong. There's no snot not sniffing any cocaine. <laughs> it's just the, the dust or whatever is silently in the air. <clears throat> anyway, let me get back to it. Um, so I, I wrote down, I created some slides that can like guide me through and I'm going to present them and kind of share them. You may not see my face, you may see my face um, as I work out these technical um, learnings in how to create and record as well as present material while I create these messages or just a little word of inspiration um, through my spiritual cuisine show. Um, just bear with me, you know, with the technical stuff. So <laughs> I hope that I don't freeze and that you get the message um, clear. So I'm going to jump right into it. Thank you for your patience so far. I can ramble on, so I got to try to remember to bring it back. But anyway, again, like I'm, I want to just share what I've learned through my experiences as to as how to hold the space or my mental state of mind and understanding what's going on in my space. So I'm going to share now and I'm going to pull up. Um, I'm going to do the entire, excuse me, the entire screen. I did Wendell last time and someone had inquired that they wanted the affirmations that I had presented in the last video or the last episode. So hopefully in sharing the entire window, you may not see me, you'll hear my voice, but you'll be able to uh, follow along and hopefully the typing or yes, the text is big enough. However, if not, just send me out, put my email address at the bottom so that you can reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns or if you're interested in the affirmation. So here we go. I'm going to share and we're going to jump right into this. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And so now we're going to do this. All right. So holding the space mentally, understanding what's going on in our mental spaces. So holding the space in the mind in a positive light, always. So one of the things that I, I realized that a lot of things that we deal with um, mentally, it's not really our stuff. It's not all our stuff. You know, a lot of things are projected onto us based, uh, based uh, excuse me, <clears throat> rather it's um, from things projected onto us that was said to us that were like negative things from childhood or being in relationships, friendships, peers in school, um, anything that was just projected and said to you that was negatively, those things sit in the subconscious of your mind and you begin to feel like that's true about you. And so that's where you get your low self-esteem and um, you have no confidence in yourself and you just really just down and out and sad. Um, and some are angry and frustrated, right? And then you have the ones that whose energy is projected onto us externally, um, whether it's not negatively directed to us. But what happens is that when we have people call us and have conversations and or people that call and only want advice or always want advice, need advice, however you choose to say it, they always want to call you and throw up on you. Yes, they want to call and throw up on you. So-and-so did such and such and such and such. I can't believe such and such did that. I asked such and such to do this and they can do this and do that. So it's like they're calling you or they're showing up at your place or you come to see them. However, the conversation takes place. And so whatever they're going through, whatever experience that is negatively has negatively affected them, 
um, and they share that with you, that energy projects onto you. It's like a mist, you know? You know how you are walking somewhere and someone's watering their grass. You may not get uh, fully wet, but you might feel the mist of it, right? Um, that's kind of like what happens when you're in the, the space or not necessarily just the space with someone. It could be over the phone. Either way, energy travels. That's just how it goes. Nothing holds energy back. Not walls, not bricks, not dirt. <laughs> because you can still connect with energies that have left bodies and they still are. They're, they're, they're called your um, spirit guides, your ancestors, uh, your starseed family, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So those that that energy can be projected onto us. And then all of a sudden we start feeling the same way um, that the people that we were talking to, whether we're trying to help them or we just want to go visit them, blah, 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 or read something on social media. Right. And it's like, oh, gosh, you just start thinking about your stuff. Like, yeah. Mm hmm. He didn't respond when I text him or, yeah, where was she? She said she was with a girl or um, ah, how am I going to get this money when you just gave it over to the Lord, right? Oh, God, help me pay this bill. Show me the way. And as soon as somebody called you tripping, you didn't throw your faith out the window and you start tripping. Oh, God. Man, see, and, and if I hadn't let nobody come in and just constantly use up the lights and run the light bill up or run the water bill up or whatever the situation is, you know, all of a sudden where we were peaceful, we become chaotic because of the energies that are around us. So are you mentally and emotionally responding to someone else's energy or emotional center that has been projected onto you? Or are you dealing with your own stuff? And your own stuff is your own stuff. Things that we constantly replay in our minds that keep us emotionally stagnated in a negative space. So if our mental space is thinking about whether it's external or internal about issues, right, versus resolutions and problems or seeing things already done or allowing yourself to just see things in a bigger or in a bigger and brighter light, then it becomes dark and cloudy and foggy. And you've got all of these different things going on in your space. And so sometimes you don't even know if it's your stuff or somebody else's stuff. But what you need to do is just step back, check yourself, and question, is this mine? And you'll know if it's yours, if it's your situation. If you feel like you have peace and you know you have faith, then you have picked up somebody else's energy of worry, of doubt, um, who don't have faith, who don't have no kind of belief. So you're picking up somebody else's stuff. And so you need to just like dismiss that, breathe it out and let it go. And then what you take in is, I am good. I am well. All is well. Everything that is good and positive, that's what you take in to try to release yourself from um, what has been projected, whether it's self-projections or external projections, okay? And, and let it go, okay? Feed yourself with positive things and lift your vibrations up through positive thinking. Um, also holding the space distractions such as media and outside occurrences. Is your mind filled with the world affairs? Are you constantly on social media platforms? <laughs> when we're like all consumed externally, this is still on the external, right? And say media. So we say social media and even um, the news. And we're just constantly reading and, and watching these things. We're on there. And all we see is people going off on somebody, somebody posting videos of fights, um, people posting videos of hatred, of racial hatred, of prejudices. You know, it's like it's so much out there that's just distracting you from the light of yourself. Your human, <clears throat> your spiritual being, excuse me, having a human being experience. So that means that as a spiritual being, you are all powerful being. And you have the power to control your external. The world has come into itself based on collective consciousness. 
Rather, it's a collective consciousness of negative thinking and hatred, a collective consciousness of love and peace. However, wherever those collective consciousness are clustered or where they are, they still roam as energy throughout the planet, right? And beyond, and you don't know that, but yes, beyond. And so it just draws what it is. And if a cluster is hate, it draws another cluster of hate, whether it's across the world, in the same country, that collective consciousness will come together. And that's how you got your hate, your control, your, your oppressions, right? And then you also have your love, your peace, your light workers. You have people like me, you have other people who are doing psychic readings. People try to talk about it because religion have um, been created to box us up, to believe that God is in a box. When God is not in a box, God is everything that has life. If God was in a box, then we would not have sun. If we have sun and, and it's only the sun and God is in a box, then guess what? It would not be us. So we must understand the power of us and how we are one with this power, right? So you have control over your world, but when you're too busy, commenting and following everybody and making these, uh, uh, sharing your opinions that's all in a negative way, you're distracting yourself from your own self. Because when you're giving advice about how somebody else needs to be and how this world needs to be, your whole world is shattered. You're building a world, an internal world on sand because you're not paying it attention. You're distracted from it. You're not giving you the rock. You're not building you on rock. You're not really getting that because you're getting everything outside of yourself. What's going on in the world, how you can help the world is finding out how you need to help your internal world. Social media is a big distraction and it has become such a negative pool. It's a great thing, but then it can be just such a bad thing. You have people who want to commit suicide. You have people who are being cyber bullied. You have people who are playing, you got men playing games, women playing games all on the internet. People are dying because of these things. And we're just still like sucked into the deeper aspect of the matrix. Not understanding that we're being pulled further and further away from the truth of what and who we are. Divine spiritual beings. And divine beings are love, peace, light, and joy. And anything less than that it is not the real of you or of your world. So if you are caught up in the media, the social um, media platforms and your phone is set on notifications, you, you're reading everything, you taking time away from yourself. Now, there are people who are going to watch this and thumb it down. It's all good. I'll help you because there's only dumb th th thumbs down, excuse me, it's only thumbs down because you still outside yourself. Those of you who spend time inside yourself will find true, true peace, infinite peace, infinite love, infinite joy, because you will find you. And then you'll know how you're supposed to be stepping in your external world. And then you'll create a better and positive external world. And then all that is around you that you know people with the energies is just not cool. Mm -mm. You will revoke their access passes. There's nothing wrong with that, even if it's family. Anything that brings you down, that does not better you or serve you for the good, then yeah, you need to clip that mm -hmm. because it's clogging up and um, it's, it's like you're hoarding. You got to, you're hoarding things within your mental space. And so of course your emotional center is all jammed up, right? But anyway, if this is something that you do, it resonates. A distraction from your inner true self and what's real. Go within and explore you. I'll say it again. If your mind, if you're, con you're consumed with social media, and worldly affairs. Either way, a distraction from your inner true self and what's real. That's what's happening. So go within and explore you. Experiences, life lessons.
When it comes to holding the headspace in a positive light and your life experiences can be a challenge. I know that. However, if you will be but honest with yourself and ask yourself, PowerPoint one, how did I end up in this situation or relationship? Were you so determined to have it, him or her, that you made it happen? There is always a root and in that root is the answer. Just ask your higher self. So I ended up getting a position, even though, you know, I'm working for myself under Sister Love Outreach Services, LLC. Um, I still would take contracts, but it's like the contracts that would come would be good. But and then I knew that I could always choose. But then it was this one. I was like, OK, it was like, a hmm. OK, so it was offered to position to be like a coordinator. I'm a theater teaching artist and an actress, right? Um, that's what I do, right? And um, I do creative storytelling um, through time slips. And that's for those with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's a great activity for just elderly people um, overall. But this position was more like administrative. Now I knew that I wasn't, but I figured that there may be a position that comes up to teach. Okay, well, that opportunity did not show up. And I got, I, I took it and I ended up in it like, wow. And I didn't know how to let it go. And the reason I didn't want to let it go, not just because of the money, it was it was not just the money, but it was more so of not letting down the person who brought me in. You know, I didn't want to let them down. But then I also knew that I wasn't being true to myself. So I was not happy. So thinking about the job, leaving the job, going to the job, my mental space, my head space was always, man, I don't want to do this shit. How did I get, man, I got to let it go. But then you got the money, right? So you're like, dang, if I let the money go, I didn't budget that in. <sighs> but then what happens is that, yeah, you may, it's, it's a back and forth. The money, mm -hmm, but then it shows you money. Money is good, but money and all that. Now when it comes to peace, peace of mind, peace in your space. So I had to set myself up to be released, but I had to do it through prayer and meditation. And yet I still was kind of like holding on, holding on. And someone came with an opportunity for me to learn Reiki. Um, Mistress May Muna. Some of you may know her if you watch this, but bless her heart, bless her soul, bless her life, bless her business, bless her all around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for introducing me to Reiki. So I took her Reiki class so that I can, as she stated, so that I can become independent and make my own money. And even though I had done that, I still had not let go. And then finally, I was just so miserable inside. I started seeing it's like the parents were showing their selves, their true selves. So my whole point of all of this is that everything showed me why I shouldn't be there. And as long as I stayed there, money, I was miserable. And so I let it go, even under like as a contract, even under my own business. It was like, I know that I can attract what I want and what I need will always show up. So I had to trust in that. And so I did. So I released that and I started finding peace. And it was the best thing that I've ever done. As far as relationships, I haven't been in a relationship since 2012, but I've had, you know, off and on, whatever, loverships. So it's like you get into a, even if it's a lovership for me, right? And you know, it's just that. It's nothing more than that. But then, of course, the feelings get to growing. But yet I still had to stay mentally intact with the truth that it was no more than a lovership. And if I felt anything more than that, rather it was hurt and pain because I wouldn't get what I want that would be required or wanted and desired in a relationship, then it was all on me. So either I was going to let it go or let the feelings go. I had to end up letting it go because I realized my feelings are my feelings. And so I had to just start accepting things and only being open to things that was what was good and best for me and served me all around, not just a little bit, not even just a little lover, no. So 
if you wonder why you're in a relationship in your head, you're like, I don't know why I got with this person. This, You know why you got with that person. You wanted that person. I don't care if it's because of the way that they gave it to you, they laid the pipe, how they rode the horse, um, how they cooked the dinner, how they paid the bill, how the car looked, how he did that, or how she did that, or however. You know why you chose them. Go back and remember. And then think, was that supposed to sustain you? Because if so, then you'll think like, oh, looks, no, I have to, I, have, I need to be with somebody for the energy, what they bring me and what we can bring each other and what we can bring to the community. But when we come in together for everything that we see that looks good, we always know, learn all that glitter and go. So you have to really think about the things that you're putting yourself into before you put yourself into them so that you won't be messed up mentally or have a confusion and fall going on in your in your in your space right that's calling all of these roller coasters of emotions right that's how you can gain control of that by being aware of the choices that you make or remembering the choices that you made that got you where you are and then start seeing how you can correct that and make it better and that's how you can begin. You have to think positive. I deserve better. I want better. I am love. I am worthy. I'm all of these good things, even in jobs, even with family. You know, we have family is as family does to me. If family is to family, fa if family is family to me, then I'm going to be family to family. But if you're family, but you're acting like someone who just lives on the block, then you're going to be someone who just lives on the block. Why? Because that's the energy. I'm not going to sacrifice my energy, which is like my money in the bank on anything. That's why I'm not really a gambler. I don't do that. Just waste the waste. I don't play lottery. Why? No. It's like energy. Don't do just to do. Don't be just to be. Have a purpose. When dealing with your life lessons through your life experiences, Hold the space in a new light, knowing that at any given moment, you have the power to make a new choice that will result in peace, dissolving karmic causations. So when I say that, it means even though you've put yourself in a situation, you still have the chance to make a new choice, to make it better. If you allow yourself to go there and raise your vibrations using positive thinking, positive affirmations, reassurances of self, of what you are, of your goodness, your greatness, it will carry you through. Become one, become one with God consciousness. And that's the consciousness of the breath that you breathe. Okay? And make a new choice. Moving on. Make it a new choice for your entire well-being. Easy. <laughs> Begin by transforming your old thought patterns into new thoughts. How? Think about only the things that you want. Healing, a healthier self, a mate, material possessions, etc. But only the things that you want. Let me say that again. Think about only the things that you want. If you want healing, see yourself healed. You want to be healthier, see yourself eating healthier, exercising, whether it's walking, uh, riding a bike, um, walking, it doesn't matter, okay? Just see yourself already there, okay? Uh, if you want a mate, see yourself traveling with them. See yourself laughing with them. See yourself doing the things that you'd like to do with your mate. Do uh, you want a new car? See yourself with that car, okay? Feel yourself driving that vehicle. See yourself signing off on that deed, okay? See yourself <sighs> grand opening to your business, okay? But allow yourself to only think about the things that you want. Those, that's how you cleanse and purge your headspace. And then you allow yourself to feel that. Make it true from your mind to your heart. And then you will manifest it with your faith. 
It's a process. And you, so you need patience. So don't lose patience in creating what you want. If you're an artist and you're painting, you can't rush the painting. You see it, you feel it, and then you got to get it on the canvas. But before you get it on the canvas, you got to see it. You got to feel it to believe it. That is going to manifest on the canvas of your life. Stop thinking about the things that you no longer want to experience in your life. Period. What? Stop thinking about the things that you no longer want to experience in your life. Period. No thinking about being tired of being sick and tired or tired of the relationship, the job, etc. Stop. Okay? Stop it. What happens is if we constantly think about the things that we don't want, then we constantly experience those things. Why? Because they're on our minds and that's where we're giving energy to. So we're giving focus and we're giving energy, which is our feelings, our faith, you know, and we just, oh, frustration. God, I'm so tired of this. All they do is lie. All they do is lie. Man, they said it was going to uh, uh, give me the raise. And next thing you know, they gave somebody else the raise. That could mean that you're not supposed to be there because your greatness is needed elsewhere. And something better is waiting for you. But when you bitching about something you ain't get, then you only cause yourself misery, mental and emotional misery. Stop. Oh, you gave Tim, you gave Tim, Tim, you gave Tim the raise? Uh, oh, oh, okay. It's cool. You go home and you start searching where you can be better. First, you see and know your worth, and then you see yourself moving moving beyond where you are because you know you deserve better. And if you truly know you deserve better and you truly want the best, then you're going to stop thinking about the things that keep you stagnant, that keep you down, that keep you believing that you don't have, that lack is real. No, lack is real in the mind of those who think lack is real. Success is real to those who think lack is, I mean, think success is real, okay? So you are what you think. Seriously, okay? You are. So you're tired of the job. You're tired of the relationship. People say, I don't know how to leave because so much invested. Yeah, it is. But so, and all you have to do is meditate for peace and harmony in, uh, in, in, in a graceful separation. Because being miserable, I don't know about you all. I refuse. It's not worth it. Nobody else. I'm not going to love nobody more than I love myself. And when I did do it, it was misery. And I'm not going to do that anymore. Because people, be there, they will go on with their lives. They would do, do them. And then you don't want hurt and you don't want stuck. And why was this? And why did I do that? And why I'm not worth? Trust me, especially women, when it comes to men, nine times out of 10, it's not you, it's them. It's because they got this thing where 10 to one, hmm, no, you, God has given you 10 chances to your one to get it right. And all they do is fail miserably. That's another video. <laughs> so anyway, think of only the things that you want. Stop thinking about the things that you no longer want to experience because you are what you think and what you think becomes. In closing, faith and holding the space, the mind. Faith. If you are what you think and what you think becomes, then you are your own savior and your own destroyer. You have faith and having the best, or you have faith and having less. You can have faith in life, or you can have faith in death. Either way, remember. You are what you think and what you think becomes. It's cause and effect. Cause of thought, affected by motion and faith, 
And then you have your action. So you want love, peace, joy, comfort, happiness, harmony, unity, all of those things, prosperity, abundance. Let that be the thought. And then breathe out and let go of the things that you don't want and trust the process. Trust you. Trust you. Go within you. Give yourself love. See your greatness. And know that externally, that's just a movie. Because the true life is internally. And whatever that looks like for you, hey, it could be your paradise or it could be your hell. That's where it starts. So in holding the space, you must be mindful of the things that you think that leads to things that you feel that can cause action. So I hope that this helped. If I wasn't clear, feel free to ask a question, leave a comment. Um, I'll leave my email address. So if you want to reach out to me, you can. And at this time, I leave you in the peace that I've come with and my love. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Spiritual Cuisine. I am Dr. Asada Haki. Namaste. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.